Hello everyone and welcome to the New Normal Speaker Series. My name is Joko Muratowski and I'm the Director of the Human School of Design. My special guest today is Mark Baudreau. And since we're meeting just before Christmas, the topic of our conversation will be toys. Toys are more than just presents for children. We often take them for granted, but the reality is that they're an important part of our lives. When playing with toys while growing up, we develop our motor and cognitive skills. We learn how to be creative, solve problems and overcome obstacles. Toys also help us to learn to walk, talk, socialize, acquire knowledge, grow emotionally and develop social and spatial awareness. Mark is a toy designer. In fact, he is one of the greatest toy designers in the world. He is also one of our star alumni. Mark, welcome to the New Normal uh, Speaker Series. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. It's great to be here. Oh, great to have you. So Mark, how does one embark on a career to design toys? Well, it was very interesting. Uh, back in the day, uh, I went to Moeller High School, which is a local school. And I was taking architecture class at school. And, but architecture class at UC was uh, full at that, at that time. So we went to the counselor and we said, well, I'd really love to go to UC. It's such a great school. Uh, what other programs might be available? And it turns out that industrial design was something that I would uh, be interested in. The great thing about UC and that program is co-op. Uh, you know, and that's really what helped really shape my career for 43 years. Uh, you know, going to UC for five years, going to the co-op program. My first co-op was in Columbus, Ohio at Richardson Smith. The second co-op was grassroots design up in Chicago. And then I had the opportunity to interview with Kenner Toys. You know, the great thing about Kenner was it's a hometown company. And um, I was able to get the job. I was their first co-op in their newly formed preliminary design department. And this was back in January of 77. So I'm kind of dating myself a little bit there. But what was really fun is when I got there, I realized that two other UC alums were right in that same department, uh, Jim Swearingen and Tom Osborne. So, you know, you find out very quickly that the toy business is a small world. And, you know, and it really was reinforced over the 43 years of my career, you know, getting to know all kinds of people and all kinds of experiences. And it all comes back to UC. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And, and, no, and in no small part was UC responsible for that, you know, with their co-op program because I would have never had the opportunity to work at Kenner uh, without UC's uh, assistance. Thank you so much. Yeah, the co-op is still uh, going strong. We're still yeah. um, uh, having a lot of exposure for our students. We still place them in some of the best companies in the country and beyond. And we are very fortunate that we can be actually doing that for more than 115 years. So, yeah, you, uh, Jim Sveringen and Tom Mosborn, you mentioned. Tom was also the design director at the time at Kenner, right? Uh, he was the, he worked in design and so did uh, Jim Swearingen. Um, so they were, they were both really great guys. You know, I love working with them. Um, it was, you know, working at, working at Kenner and going to UC, uh, it really was a camaraderie. You know, it's, it's all about, it's really all about the people because you can't do any of these projects on your own. It really, yeah. is, a, it really is a collaboration, you know, and having people like Jim and Tom, you know, on the team and them accepting me, you know, cause you know, I was just the co-op at the time. Uh, but I was, I, I really felt like part of the team uh, you know, and they gave me the projects, which was cool. And they said, okay, Mark, here's a project. Go for it. Uh, you know, uh, Tom is still here. He's yeah. still visiting us. He's actually coming and teaching classes for us. Yes, I was aware of that. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing it's, um, that we still have this connection after so many years. Um, and we can also leverage still on that experience. Um, Mark, you guys were 
best known for working on the Star Wars toys series. You were the first uh, group of designers who essentially developed the original Star Wars toys. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, that was a very interesting experience. Uh, starting as a co-op, you know, in January of 77. If memory serves, I think just in February of that year, a month or so later, uh, Kenner acquired the Star Wars license, you know, partnering with Lucasfilm. Uh, I don't know if anybody knew it at the time, with maybe the exception of Jim Swearingen, because uh, Jim Swearingen really had the insight uh, to know that there was something special about this story. You know, and that's what it's all about. You know, he, he read the script, he saw this, he knew the potential, the characters, the vehicles, the worlds that you could experience. You know, it was gonna be something that was totally new that no one had ever seen before. So kudos to Jim, you know, uh, he kind of started the ball rolling and kudos to Kenner for, you know, embracing his passion that, you know, Ken, that Star Wars was something that we should pursue. Uh, and, you know, the rest of it is history, <laughs> as they say, uh, you know, and to be able to work on it at the very beginning, I'm not sure if anybody really knew how big it was going to be, but it was certainly something that just touched a nerve with everybody. You know, everybody could relate to the story and to the movie. And yes, it was in a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, but it was something that you could relate to. And I think that's what George Lucas really did a great job with, you know, telling a story that there was, there, there was something there for everybody. Uh, you know, there was the action and there was the comedy and a little bit of romance, but, you know, and the good versus evil, you know, and, and how and how that all relates to everybody's lives. You know, 43 years later, Star Wars is such a part of the culture. You know, you see references for Star Wars all the time, uh, you know, whether it's classic or whether it's the new Mandalorian show, uh, you know, it really has been once in a lifetime experience. And to be able to be some of the first folks to work on the product, you know, I'm very proud of that. You know, after all these years, you can look back and reflect on, you know, what you were a small part of, you know, to realize that, you know, you worked on product that really changed people's lives in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of childhood memories, you know, memories that, the older fans now are passing along to their kids and their kids are going to be passing along to theirs. And so it really, Star Wars really is an heirloom, if you will. You know, it's multi-generational and, you know, and Star Wars fans are really passionate and so are the designers. <laughs> yeah. You know, every detail counts. And, and so we're, we're really proud of what we were able to accomplish. We are also very proud of all the work that you have done. Um, and especially that even as a co-op, you know, when you were not even fully employed there, you were still a student, essentially, that you had this opportunity to contribute to such an iconic uh, collection. And well, yeah, so it's, it's really absolutely amazing. Yeah, and like I said, that I think a lot of credit has to do with Kenner, you know, how the management was set up. Uh, Dave Okada was our vice president. And like I said, Jim and Tom, were an integral part of the design team, along with a lot of other folks, of course. And like I said, I think they they allowed me to be more than a co-op. You know, um, yes, I you know I would you know hey hey go ahead and cut this you know mat or whatever, and but they gave me real projects to work on. You know, and and I have to I really respect them for that. You know, and um, I think that really helped me in my path, you know, over the years. So I, I really do thank them for allowing me to be more than just a co-op, but actually be part of the team. Yeah, that's actually quite typical for our co-ops. They're, they're, they're actually quite advanced. In fact, you know, the FedEx logo was designed by one of our co-ops. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, it's also in our museum. And by the way, we, we have the original collection uh, 
the very first set that uh, that you guys designed is also here in the museum. We, we're we're very proud of the work that you have done and, and of your legacy. So thank you for that. Yeah, that's also part of the collection. The the yes. box. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it really, like I said, it, the people are the most important part of any design element. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of folks, dedicated folks to, you know, make things happen. And, and Kenner and Hasbro was uh, very fortunate to have uh, a lot of very passionate and dedicated folks uh, working on you know, the Star Wars over the years. Yeah, so this is one of the most successful toy series in the history of the world. How many toys uh, have been sold since um, you launched it in 1978, I believe? Oh, I mean, um, oh my goodness. That's, I'm a designer. I'm not so much of a numbers guy. <laughs> I had a quick look uh, just to check on the, the figures. And while well, you were at Kenner, between 1978 and 1985, there were 300 million Star Wars action figures sold. That's a lot of figures. <laughs> that is a lot of figures. And that is just between 1978 and 1985. We're about to end 2020 now, and the Star Wars franchise is going stronger than ever. So it's uh, quite fascinating. And um, you cannot imagine the franchise itself without, without these toys. So that is that is quite remarkable success uh, for you guys. Um, yeah, I was just I was just going to say that's that's one heck of a number. I, I knew it was quite high. I didn't know it was quite that high. Yeah, I just um, looked it up now <laughs> just to see. <laughs> yeah, it's like, high. the the nice thing was to you know look back and realize that you were you know even just a small part of Star Wars is is pretty is pretty cool is pretty cool you know not too many people have had the opportunity uh to do what we have done over the years uh you know it's a it's a smallish group you know relatively speaking but again it's a passionate group and and folks over the years over the last 40 years that i've been involved uh, you know a lot of uc alumni you know, a lot of partnerships with Lucasfilm, our partners in Asia, you know, Hasbro and Kenner, everybody coming together to make all of this happen, uh, you know, because you're not going to produce that quantity of product, uh, you know, without a lot of folks, you know, being very diligent at what they do. And it's really the fans, you know, we can make product all day but it's the fans that we're making the product for. You know, it's, it's their passion that feeds us. And that what we're, that's what really makes working on Star Wars such a great thing. Because it's, it's more than just you. You know, it really is for a community of people that call themselves Star Wars fans. And I think that community is really what makes Star Wars special. And I think it's that community that makes UC and its co-ops special. Uh, you know, it really is something that both sides, whether it's school or whether it's business, are really passionate about what we do. You know, and I, and I like to think that that reflects in the product that we make, you know, whether it's, whether it's a design for a younger fan or whether it's a design for a collector where they really demand the highest quality possible, we do it because we also want to you know, set a high standard. Uh, so it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. I think we're passionate from a design point of view because our fans are passionate. And that really does feed off of each other. And I think that makes for a great synergy. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, it was um, a lot of that was highlighted in the, in the Netflix uh, series, the toys that, that made us. And um, it was um, great to see you and uh, Jim uh, in that uh, show. It was also great that it was the opening show for the series, the toys that made us. Yes, that was. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was shows how um, important 
this particular this particular toy collection was. Yeah, that was that was a, that was very special. I was glad to be part of that, you know, and to see Jim walk through the old offices uh, in the Kroger building <laughs> in Cincinnati uh, was uh, was pretty cool. Uh, that was it brought back a lot of memories. So, um, what would you say was the most exciting part of working on on the Star Wars toys for you? What was uh, what was the most exciting toy that you you had? The design? Well, that's a big question. Um, you know, there's a lot of th exciting things being able to work on Star Wars over 43 years. Uh, like I said before, I think the first thing foremost is the people, because you really do start to bond with folks over the years. You build relationships. Um, the opportunity to work with various aspects of the company. So you, you work with design, but you're also working with engineering and packaging and tooling and, you know, and, and all aspects of the company. And that really is cool to, it broadens your scope of knowledge when you're able to work with that larger team. You know, and then you add in working with Lucasfilm uh, over the years, you know, they were great partners. You know, it really is a collaborative effort you know, between Hack Kenner and Hasbro and Lucasfilm, you know, and that in that in itself was really exciting because you knew you were getting information from Lucasfilm, uh, you know, to really help develop the best product. And long before people would see it in the films, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it would take over a year to develop the items. And, and so they were really good about letting us know what the story was all about, because that's what you have to be able to relate to the product that you make, whether it's an action figure or a vehicle, you know, to know, to know that story and know the context. That really helps as a designer because I think that, that gives you a little bit better understanding on what it is that you're trying to design. You know, how is this really going to relate to the movie? How are people going to react to this particular character or a vehicle? You know, and so you want to make sure that you represent Darth Vader the way he needs to be represented, or you need to make sure that you do a Millennium Falcon properly, because a Millennium Falcon in the film is a character itself. You know, it's more than just a, a vehicle. Uh, you know, it's something that carries our care, our heroes from planet to planet and story to story. And it's without the Millennium Falcon, a lot of things wouldn't happen. Uh, you know, it's just like R2-D2. A lot of things wouldn't happen if it wasn't for R2-D2. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, you do really do need to understand how that product relates. And, and I think that's really the, the big part for me. Uh, the other thing is, there's a lot of cool things. You know, designing the product is great. You know, uh, I love that. I've been kind of the vehicle guy, you know, over the years. I've worked on action figures and role play and, and things like that, but vehicles are always what I had a passion to do, you know, and Kenner and Hasbro allowed me to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, in some of the other pieces and other interviews, working on a three and three quarter inch line, I've had the privilege of working on all the major Malayan Falcons over the years. Uh, so that's, so Millennium Falcon is kind of near and dear to me. You know, I spent a lot of time working on versions of those. Uh, and then those are probably my favorite toys. I have others, you know, Boba Fett is a big character of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now that the Mandalorian is out, as you mentioned, Star Wars is bigger than, as big as, uh, uh, as you mentioned, Star Wars and Mandalorian you know, because of Mandalorian is as big as it has been in a long, long time. Uh, people are really just into Mandalorian so much. And I was so excited to see Boba Fett <laughs> return, you know, because Boba Fett was too cool of a character to just be eaten by a Sarlacc. So uh, to have him return, uh, you know, to have him fly around in the Slave One, which is another vehicle I designed, uh, is really, really pretty cool. That's kind of my passion is that original trilogy and a lot of other collectors, that's their passion too, because that's where they, you really, everybody was exposed for the first time to Star Wars with those three films. And they certainly, 
made the most impact, I think. But having said that, if you're a younger fan, you might have gotten onto that Star Wars train for one, two, and three, episodes one, two, and three. So from that standpoint, that might be your collection base are those films. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that in general, um, the first trilogy is probably the most collected uh, just because I think it has the most memories for everybody. It's a real, it's a very real looking world, you know, Star Wars. And so you, you gravitate towards the Lukes and the Hans and the Leias of the world, but you also are interested in all those background characters, you know, that you see and how, how do they relate to Star Wars? And so I think that's really something that, again, Lucasfilm really did a great job in, in just putting a story together that there is something there for everybody. Why these toys have such a following and fan base? Why do people collect toys way past their childhood? I think Star Wars is a really unique situation. Uh, when it came out, uh, you know, it was just the really good timing. It was a feel good movie, you know, that everybody could relate to. You could see the community start to build. Uh, you know, we would always joke there'd be lines around the planet waiting to go into Star Wars movies. You know, and back then Star Wars movies would stay at the theaters for a year. You know, even the best movies uh, today or what, a theater for maybe three, four weeks, possibly. But Star Wars was around for quite a while. You know, they, you know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have computers, things like that. So Star Wars really was something that you would go see multiple times. Hey, let's go see Star Wars again. Let's go see Star Wars again. You know, because it really was there, you know. And I think it just, it, the following grew and grew and grew. And again, it became a community, which I think is so important uh, with Star Wars. And for folks who were young at the time when those movies came out, I think those, that's an experience that you didn't forget. And so you, you get older, you start to have kids, you're still interested in Star Wars. Kenner Hasbro is still producing Star Wars product. And, and I think, you know, as, an, as you grow up as a fan, you see an item that, wow, I used to have this as a kid. You know, I, I no longer have it, but boy, I really would like to get it again. So now the first group of fans are now starting to get back into trying to find, kind of rekindle their childhood memories. Can you talk a little bit, um about your design process? Well, I think the, the design process starts with knowing the story. I think, you know, you look at the items that you want to uh, develop. I say, let's take a Star Wars ex as an example. Whether you do a figure or a vehicle, I think you want to understand what that character or vehicle is all about. What's its, what's its purpose in the story? You know, how does it relate from one aspect to another? Is the vehicle important to a particular figure? Is it, is it important to a, uh, a story point? And I think being able to understand the story is probably the most important aspect of the process. Because I think once you understand the story, that allows you to start to dig deeper into what that needs to be. If it's a figure or a vehicle, what's the appropriate scale? What's the appropriate audience? Is this being designed for a young fan? Is it being designed for a collector? Um, and, and so all of those elements start to give you your checklist on things that you want to make sure that you uh, take into account. Um, 
you know, for a collector, the decoration, the amount of detail that you put on to an item is going, you're going to look at that differently than if it's for a young, younger crowd. Younger crowd might be a cleaner version, a bit more, a little bit more vibrant colors, uh, a clean version, if you will. Um, whereas if you go into the collector side of things, they're going to be more battle worn. They're going to be much more complicated uh, detailing, whether it's on whether it's decoration or whether it's actually detail molded into the parts. Uh, they're all Star Wars. Both ends of the spectrum are Star Wars, but you do take a look at where you want it to be in the in the series. Mark, let me ask you one uh, uh, final question. What is your most favorite toy of all times? And it doesn't need to be from Star Wars, uh, from the Star Wars universe. Well, I guess because I was working on Star Wars for so long. <laughs> so it is from the Star Wars universe. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is kind of from the Star Wars universe. I mean, you can see behind me, there's a, a big Malayan Falcon and there's all well, for my this shoulder, a big Malayan Falcon and a, the newer, smaller one behind the other shoulder. Um, you know, I love Darth Vader and Boba Fett and lots of other things, but because I have had the opportunity to work on so many of the Millennium Falcons, that really is just a part of who I am, a part of me. You know, we wanted to try to make every version a little bit different, you know, because he is a it is a character and we really wanted to, uh, you know, highlight that. Um, but so I guess I would say that, you know, yeah, <laughs> Millennium Falcon is probably my favorite, I would say. I love the Millennium Falcon. Um, it is it is quite remarkable, and the detail that uh, that goes into it is is quite remarkable. So, yeah, amazing job, Mark. Well, thank you. Like I said, there's a lot of behind the scenes, you know, that make this happen. It's, you know, I happen to be, you know, in this interview today. You know, you're speaking with me about all of this, you know, Star Wars product, but there have been many, many folks that have contributed to the success of Star Wars. And I just, I'm proud to be a small part, but I also realize I'm just a small part. And again, I thank UC and its co-op program and its teachers, um, you know, for giving me the opportunity to be here today to speak with you about this and, and uh, how much I really do uh, respect UC and I'm very fortunate to have been born here in Cincinnati, you know, to be to be able to go to the local school, you know, and to say I'm proud to be a Bearcat. And, thank you. Um, so, so thank, thank you. you for this interview. I very much appreciate it. No, I appreciate it too. And uh, it's always a great meeting uh, um, an alumnus from the school and um, learning about the work they have done, seeing how well they have done and what they have achieved. It, uh, it, it is really special to us. And um, Mark, thank you so much for being my guest. And thank you for bringing joy with your work to the lives of so many people, myself included. So, <laughs> well, thank you for that. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yes, you too. Very Merry Christmas. And to all the UC folks out there and all the Star Wars fans, uh, stay safe and have a great holiday. <laughs>